Protests and boycotts from the men and women's national teams, a poorly conceived business deal that no one really understands, funding cuts in the wake of unprecedented on-field success, and financial records that no one's allowed to see. After months of acrimony, legal threats, and media outbursts, something finally had to give at Canada Soccer. And yesterday, that something was the resignation of President Nick Bontis, who acknowledged that change was needed in order to resolve the long-running labour dispute that's dominated the Canadian footballing landscape since last summer. The term resignation is used lightly here. In reality, Bontis was pushed after just a unanimous vote of no confidence from the President's Forum, a group of Canada's provincial and territorial soccer federations. It comes in the wake of a calamitous build-up to the She Believes Cup earlier this month, where Bontis threatened to take legal action if the women's team went ahead with a planned boycott at their Florida training camp. The ultimatum brought the players, reluctantly, back out onto the pitch, but it also brought greater attention to the questions they were asking. After the men's qualifications for Qatar brought in an unexpected World Cup windfall of $10 million, why was funding being cut for the women's program as they prepared for their own World Cup this summer? What had Canada Soccer actually committed to when they signed a 10-year deal involving sponsorship rights with Canada Soccer Business back in 2018? And why couldn't Bontis give straight answers to both sets of players about Canada Soccer's finances in general? There's also the issue of a government hearing next month where players and senior leadership will be called to give evidence to the House of Commons Heritage Committee regarding the unequal treatment of the women's national side and allegations of sexual abuse within soccer programs. So as Nick Bontis leaves to take on a new role at CONCACAF, will a change at the top finally lead to widespread change that players have been demanding? I feel like I'm repeating myself when I talk about Canada soccer, but as said previously, the drama does not end. James Sharman, Mikey Singh, Sarah Pariah joining you guys. Nick Bontis, president of Canada Soccer, resigns Monday afternoon. James, I, I feel like I keep telling you how exhausted I am when we talk <laughs> about Canada soccer, but really big news. Um, is this a step in the right direction? You know, coming out of this, I know it's still fresh. There's no replacement yet. But what's your immediate thoughts when you heard this? Yeah, my immediate thoughts is Nick Bontis is a fall guy. I think uh, that this, this unsavory situation needed a fall guy to affect some kind of change. Um, I think the players demanded change. Uh, they, they said that, um, whoever it was, whether it's going to be Nick Bontis or, or Cochrane or the entire board or, or whatever, they wanted blood. Um, the fact of the matter is, as president, he hadn't got the CBA done. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, and we're not inside those meetings, we don't know what's holding up these, these negotiations, um, but he is the figurehead, right? It's his job to get this done. So um, a really nasty situation and, and change was needed, it is needed in some regard, and maybe a fresh perspective, a fresh face will, will get some, some movement here, but we'll wait and see, right? Because it's more than just the figurehead, right? As Canada president, the target's always going to be on you, but it's so far beyond just Nick Bontis, this oh, whole situation so that, uh, you know, I think we need to really realize that. And it's easy to point fingers and cast stones, but now he's gone. Mm -hmm. What's the next move? Well, if anything, it's reason for optimism. Right, with not just people who were involved in those negotiations, but also from the public. And I think that's such a big part. It's played, honestly, too big of a part, you can say, in sort of these negotiations and just how much pressure has been applied. Rightfully, wrongfully, we don't know. We're not inside those rooms, right? But at the end of the day, it's, action was taken. And now, hopefully, the optimism is that there is going to be some tangible mm -hmm. solution here moving forward. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the provinces were so quiet um, up until that point. And then mm -hmm. there's a letter to the office of the president saying, we want you out. And if he hadn't resigned, they could have forced that at some point as well. Uh, and you're right about the public pressure. That's that's what the players have done. They've played it beautifully. Oh, yeah. That's their only leverage, oh, really, yeah. is mm -hmm. the public uh, opinion. And it is forcing change now will it force real change you know we still need transparency right they, they're still demanding to see the books from both canada soccer and csb canada soccer business that's the one recurring thing and i over heard, I heard over. weeks ago that the canada soccer had agreed to show them those books but then i've heard nothing since then yeah so well, I don't know whether they're being divulged or not. There's so much secrecy. No one has come out also either after yesterday, um, sorry, Monday, when Bontis released his statement, you know, 
he actually referenced what you were saying that he did um in fact know that there was change that needed to come you know here it says i've submitted my resignation effective immediately he thanks the membership the players and the sponsors but then he goes down and says you know i know that at this moment change is re basically required after that it's been dead silent from all angles and you know this is coming after just only two weeks ago when the women were protesting and trying to go on strike, you know, months before a World Cup. Last year, it was it's almost like the exact same thing. The men were going on strike just months before their World Cup. There's clearly a problem here, Mikey. Mm -hmm. Is appointing a new, a new president, is this, is it a step in the right direction? Is it, who would it even be? <laughs> like, there's, there's so many unanswered questions right now i feel like it's even more so than before when we think about canada soccer it's not the most attractive job <laughs> right now to no me. it is not you're not gonna have a lot of people lining up to what are you walking into you. yeah like, that's the thing right what are you walking into is was nick bontis or anybody else who's in that position are they going to be able to move the needle here and open the books which i again i think it's the most it's the one thing that keeps recurring and one thing this is all circling around what is the CSB deal? What does that look like? Where has all the money gone? That's the biggest question because we look at the World Cup and Canada is supposed to be getting a really large amount of money from the World Cup, mm -hmm. yet they're still cutting funding this year. Where did all of that money disappear to? So, yeah, I, whoever comes in next, maybe they're more willing to open the books because they're a little bit more detached from the situation. We do remember Nick Bontis played a role in getting the CSB deal over the line. So maybe someone else who comes in and be like, yeah, you know, that wasn't me that did that. <laughs> this is what happened. They did that. I'm here to save can the day. You yeah, but can you restructure it even legally? That's the That's million the, dollar course, question, yeah. right? Is CSB willing to restructure it? They came out in the statement, right, and said something along the lines that they're willing to Well, they're negotiate. prepared to, to help the women's team, you know, get yeah. these games in home soil and find some funds, which is great. But if, if Canada Socket is broke, and I think they are broke, why are they broke, mm -hmm. right? And I think the women are just asking, just tell us why, you know? We're not gonna try and ask for money that isn't there, but explain to us where it's gone. Yeah. Um, and it seems as if right now, this this association is broke, you know? The under 17s have huge games in a World Cup coming up. Mm -hmm. They might have a window, one training session, one training camp, maybe. Um, they are being cut back. It's not just the men and women here, right? It's every part of Canadian soccer. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, that's fair enough, I, I get that. Where did the 11 million that the men spent last year come from? How could they find that money? Is, is there private donations here? And, and I understand there are a lot of handouts from mm -hmm. the private sector that we don't know about, have really financed this, this program for a very long time. Um, so, you know, right now, uh, the, the vice president is Charmaine Crooks. Uh, we haven't heard from the board yet. Will she take the helm as an interim leader? Will there be elections soon? And like you said, uh, who's up for it? I mean, to me, Optically, if the next president is from the system in Canada, it doesn't look good once mm -hmm. again. You, you almost need a fresh face with fresh ideas to try and get some movement here, I think. Even if there's good people, and there are good people, we shouldn't forget this, there are really good people in Canadian mm -hmm. soccer at the top, top level, right? They're not all bad people, like I know a lot of people on social media would like to say, there's no yeah. good in Canadian, <laughs> there is good in Canadian soccer, some hardworking people have done work wonders. Maybe someone could do a great job in, within there, but I, for me personally, I think you need a new face. Trouble is, it's a volunteer position, right? You can't just go out and headhunt someone and say, hey, want to come here for free and deal <laughs> with this? It's not that easy. Yeah, well, I mean, there's definitely more to this story. A friendly reminder that the Canadian men's national team will be taking on Curaçao March 25th, and the women will be back in action April 11th against France, but we'll keep you posted as best as we can regarding Canada soccer.